at the beginning at the end I will wait uh, for a couple of minutes for those who have been following uh, to join me Hi Carol, welcome. Hi Maureen. Hi Dan, Kathy. Okay. So I'm going. Hi Linda, Dan. Let's start with, uh, with our prayer, Regina Celli. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia. For he whom you did marry to bear, Alleluia, has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech you that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, yesterday we read from Space Salvi, uh, paragraphs 13 through 37. Um, on action and suffering. And today we will continue to read um, the remaining three paragraphs of this, uh, this particular setting for learning and practicing hope, action and suffering. Um, there are a lot of, a lot of good, um, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things to, to take away uh, from, from yesterday's catechesis and also um, <clears throat> the one previous to that on prayer. And uh, today I'm going to continue reading, um, starting with paragraph 38, um, and um, I will end this section of, uh, on action and suffering as a setting for hope. Um, in case you're wondering, we're, we're very close um, the, the encyclical to the end. The encyclical has 50 paragraphs. Um, hi, Diana. Hi, Tiffany. Um, we are very close to, uh, to the end of it. Um, so. It becomes more and more practical as we, we go forward. Um, and so let's read um, from paragraph 38. The true measure of humanity is essentially determined in relationship to suffering and to the sufferer. This holds true both for the individual and for society. A society unable to accept its suffering members and incapable of helping to share their suffering and to bear it inwardly through compassion is a cruel and inhuman society. Notice the word compassion, right? The etymology, I love etymology, and um, etymology helps, um, uh, helps understand deeper um, the meaning of words. Um, we know that words are not pure sounds, but um, there's, um, there's much meaning behind them and the history of how they became um, what they are today. So the word compassion comes from the Latin uh, cum passio, and um, passio means means to suffering, right? 
So um, the verb is cum patire, to suffer with. And therefore the noun has become cum, cum pas, compasio, that means to uh, suffering with. So um, compassion, to have compassion means to suffer with someone else, right? So Pope Benedict says here, a society unable to accept its suffering members and incapable of helping to share their suffering and bear it inwardly through compassion is a cruel and inhuman society, right? We, we can all agree that the society without compassion is a cruel and inhuman society. Yet society cannot accept its suffering members and support them in their trials unless individuals are capable of doing so themselves, right? So we, we talk about the world, we talk about society, but society is made of individuals, right? So, um, so it's important to get down to, 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 to the bottom, right, to, to, to be practical, because the risk is to, to speak about society generically and, and um, in wide terms that avoids concreteness, right? So the society is made by you and I, um, and therefore um, we cannot, um, um, if individuals, don't make like you and I don't make daily the choice to embrace the suffering members of our society with compassion through compassion then um, that we're not going to to achieve that goal of having a society that is uh, compassionate so uh, moreover the individual cannot accept another suffering unless he personally is able to find meaning in suffering a path of purification and growth in maturity a journey of hope. So, you know, since we're talking here from society to the individual about the individual, then each one of us, right? We cannot accept another person's suffering unless, um, um, unless we are able to find meaning in suffering, right? Because suffering is is in itself is is an evil thing. Is a bad. Is is it's not what God wanted for us, right? So unless we, we, we made sense of it, we make some sense of it, then there's, um, and, and also we see in it a path of purification and growth in maturity, um, even a journey of hope, then, th then we're not going to be truly compassionate and helping of, of the other. Indeed, to accept the other who suffers means that I take up his suffering in such a way that becomes mine also. Um, because it has now become a shared suffering, though, in which another person is present, the suffering is penetrated by the light of love, right? So we're talking here about suffering and sharing and someone else's suffering. And by opening ourselves and by embracing that suffering person or those suffering persons, right? Um, actually, what is happening here is something beautiful. It's, Pope Benedict says, this suffering is penetrated by the light of love. The Latin word consolatio, consolation, so you have cum passio and consolatio. This con and cum means with, right? So the word with is in there. So the Latin word consolatio, consolation, expresses this beautifully. It suggests being with the other in his solitude so that it ceases to be solitude. Think about this. So, consolation is being with the other in his solitude, so that it ceases to be solitude. Furthermore, the capacity to accept suffering for the sake of goodness, truth, and justice is an essential criterion of humanity. Because if my own well-being and safety are ultimately more important than truth and justice, then the power of the stronger prevails. Then violence and untruth reign supreme. Truth and justice must stand above my comfort and physical well-being, or else my life itself becomes a lie. In the end, even the yes to love is a source of suffering. Because love always requires expropriations of my I, in which I allow myself to be pruned and wounded. Love simply cannot exist without this painful renunciation of myself, for otherwise it becomes pure selfishness and there, thereby ceases to be love. So there's 
there's so much again to unpack here, right? We started um, talking about compassion and consolation and how it is important that, that we realize that we cannot, we should not be putting ourselves before truth and justice, right? If we do that, um, if, we, if we do that, then my life itself becomes, becomes a lie. And the, a, a, a deep truth is that that love, um, love means suffering because it means renouncing myself, giving up myself, um, renouncing putting myself in the first place, putting the good of the other, the need of the other, right? Think of extreme, um, extreme gestures of, of, of this, this truth uh, by someone like St. Uh, Maximilian Mary Colby, who um, as, as, as a priest and as um, a religious um, decided to give up his life in exchange, uh, in exchange for that of a simple man who he, he did not even know but that man who was condemned to death had family and, 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 and he was crushed at the thought that he was going to die he said I, will, I want to take that man's place so you see how again uh, Pope Benedict s says here that suffering is penetrated by the light of love where there is compassion, right? So in that uh, hell on earth that was a concentration, the concentration camp at Auschwitz, St. Maximilian Mary Colby, by his gesture of love, of extreme charity um, towards that man who was condemned to death, he, um, the, the, the light, there was a light there in that hell on earth but that was because he decided to love to give give himself but this is true not just in extreme situations like that of martyrdom this is um, of martyrdom of charity um, that's what Saint um, Saint Maximilian Mary Colby was but that's true about our daily martyrdom of, of about the charity of our uh, everyday lives right um, I'm thinking especially of the sacrament of marriage right it's all about living for for the other, not living for oneself. Or in in another in the sac another sacrament of service like uh, holy orders, diaconate, priesthood, um, um, episcopacy. Um, you again, you're called to deny yourself and to put the good of the others uh, before you and and above you. And um, and and this is we know that that this involves um, love, involves suffering, right and. Um, but again, the, the, this suffering is penetrated by the light of love. So, um, and it is also hope because we, um, it's, you know, there's a jo there is joy in being like God in, in giving of oneself. Um, St. Paul says there is more, um, there is more uh, joy in giving than in receiving, right? And, and so the meaning of our life is accomplished because we give of, we give of ourselves. And, um, and while if we search for our personal happiness, um, no matter what, then we will not be happy, right? And think about that other verse uh, from the Gospels where Jesus says, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it, right? And th those verses are, are often like, how is this possible that one be happy for one to be happy while losing oneself, right? But you realize, as we read this, this, um, uh, these reflections of Pope Benedict, how it all makes sense, how it all comes together. So, love simply cannot exist without this painful renunciation of myself, for otherwise it becomes pure selfishness and thereby ceases to be love. I'm going to read uh, if, uh, subsequent paragraph 39. To suffer with the other and for others. To suffer for the sake of truth and justice. To suffer out of love and in order to become a person who truly loves. These are fundamental ele elements of humanity and to abandon them would, would destroy man himself. Yet once again the question arises, are we capable of this? Is the other important enough to warrant my becoming on his account? a person who suffers? Does truth matter to me enough to make suffering worthwhile? 
Is the promise of love so great that it justifies the gift of myself? In the history of humanity, it was the Christian faith that had the particular merit of bringing forth within man a new and deeper capacity for these kinds of suffering that are decisive for his humanity. The Christian faith has shown us that truth, justice, and love are not simply ideals, but enormously weighty realities. It has shown us that God, truth and love in person, desired to suffer for us and with us. Bernard of Clairvaux, the great saint of the Middle Ages, coined the marvelous expression, impassibilis est Deus, said non incompassibilis. God cannot suffer, but he can suffer with, right? There's the, 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 the play there around these words, impassibilis, um, the one who's not able to suffer, impossible to suffer, and incompassibilis, right? So he, he put the word with there, com, and, and, and it changes, right? So God cannot suffer, but he can suffer with. Man is worth so much to God that he himself became man in order to suffer with man in an utterly real well, way, in flesh and blood, as is revealed to us in the account of Jesus' passion. Hence, in all human suffering, we are joined by one who experiences and carries that suffering with us. Hence, consolatio, consolation, is present in all suffering, the consolation of God's compassionate love, and so the star of hope arises. Let me repeat this. In all human suffering, we are joined by one who experiences and carries that suffering with us. Right? It's not just between us humans. Right? It is God who, um, who carries this suffering with us. Hence, consolation is present in all suffering. The consolation of God's compassionate love. And so the star of hope arises. Certainly, in our many, dif many different sufferings and trials, we always need the lesser and greater hopes, too. A kind visit, the healing of internal and external wounds, a favorable resolution of a crisis, and so on. In our lesser, lesser trials, these kind of hope may, be, may even be sufficient. But in truly great trials, where I must make a definitive decision to place the truth before my own welfare, career, and possessions, I need the certitude of that true, great hope of which for um, <clears throat> just one second. For this too, we need witnesses, martyrs, who have given themselves totally so as to show us the way day after day. Um, notice here the word martyr, which means witness, right? For this too, we need witnesses, martyrs, who have given themselves totally so as to show us the way, day after day. We need them if we are to prefer goodness to comfort, even in the little choices we face each day, knowing that this is how we live life to the full. Let us say it once again. The capacity to suffer for the sake of the truth is the measure of humanity. Yet this capacity to suffer depends on the type and extent of the hope that we bear within us, and build upon. The saints were able to make the great journey of human existence in the way that Christ had before them because they were brimming with great hope. So in these three sentences we have the conclusion of, of this reflection on, on, on um, action and, and suffering as settings for hope. The capacity to suffer for the sake of the truth is the measure of, of humanity. Yet this capacity suffer, to suffer depends on the type and extent of the hope that we bear within us and build upon, right? So we would not be able to, to be compassionate and, 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 and bring consolation if, um, if, 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 if we did not have if this, 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 the example and the reliance and the help of, of God, God's consolation in the first place, God's compassion towards us. So... This capacity to suffer with the other, right, to experience, to be compassionate and to bring consolation depends on the type and extent of the hope that we bear within us and build upon, right? So 
Saint Maximilian Kolbe, which I, I gave, just gave his example, he would not have been able to give up his life in that way and to die a cruel death if it wasn't because he knew that the great hope wa that was for him beyond this life, right? If he didn't hope in eternal life and in eternal beatitude, um, he, 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 he would not, like, what, what could have motivated um, a man to do something so, so extreme? So this is true in the big situations, big trials of life, but also in the small ones, right? And um, one, one, um, something that I, I love about, you know, we, we learn so much from the saints, and another saint that comes to my mind is uh, Saint Jose Maria Escrivá de Balaguer, the founder of Opus Dei. The whole charism of Opus Dei, uh, which means the, God's work, is to do God's work in the world, wherever, wherever you are, whatever you do, to do God's work in, in, in that, in the daily, small and big actions, um, that's where your eternity is being played out. That's where, that's where holiness is being played out. Like, to, to quote, my, like the sanctity of, of, of daily life. And um, Mother Teresa, um, another, another great saint, um, used to say, it is, not, it is not great, great acts that God expects of us, but small daily, in uh, small daily um, acts to do them with great love, right? So you see again how much we learn from the saints, and Pope Benedict refers here to them. He says, the saints were able to make the great journey of human existence in the way that Christ had done before them, because they were brimming with great hope, right? Um, so um, that's, I think, there, there, there's, it's so beautiful, this, this whole section. Um, and paragraph, the next paragraph, the last one of this section, is actually just a small, um, a very, very small reflection on something very practical. Um, he says, I would like to add here another brief comment with some relevance for everyday living. There used to be a form of devotion, perhaps less practiced today, but quite widespread not long ago, that included the idea of offering up the minor daily hardships that continually strike at us like irritating jabs, thereby giving them a meaning. Of course, there were some exaggerations and perhaps unhealthy applications of this devotion, but we need to ask ourselves whether they may not, after all, have been something essential and helpful contained within it. What does it mean to offer something up? Those who did so were convinced that they could insert these little annoyances into Christ's great compassion, so that they somehow became part of the treasury of compassion so greatly needed by the human race. In this way, even the small inconveniences of daily life could acquire meaning and contribute to the economy of good and of human love. Maybe we should consider whether it might be judicious to revive this practice ourselves, right? So, um, so you see here too how how, how practical uh, we can become in in exercising hope, um, and especially in this time of pandemic, um, how many annoyances we have. I myself am tempted to 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 resort to anger, to frustration, uh, for for. Um, um, a lot of uh, uh, how the, 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 the encumbrances and roadblocks that we continually face. But, um, you know, I, I, I keep going back to a great advice of uh, one of my, my spiritual directors um, I had during seminary. He used to say, the best penances that you can do is the one that life provides for you. Uh, you know, and I often think about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's I could choose some penances for myself, right? Like we have some penances in the in the church on Fridays to uh, to give to give up meat um, as a sign of uniting ourselves. See again to suffer with compassion, to suffer with Christ, who suffered for us on on that day. Um, you know, and and there 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 are these practices in the history of the church. But beside or in Lent, right? We have we have the fasting. And we have so many practices to uh, to to exercise, to um, to suffer with, and to um, you know, and 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 not to uh, give up in front of our our temptations, right? So that uh, those practices, ascetical practices, are 
are very helpful and the church provides for us many but how about offering up um, you know what we what we go through today a hardship we go through today as as a way of responding with love rather than something negative relying to something negative you know like anger and frustration and and even worse when it becomes um, you know uh, spreading that anger and in in you know unleashing uh, with with others around us right I always I'm always impressed when I you know when 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 people you know I, I when I go to the grocery store or you know I, I, I have to, to run into something for for something you know how a simple smile of someone who who probably may have, have may have their own fears about about this whole situation right think about think about the nurses the doctors think about the um, think about um, uh, those who uh, the the grocery shop workers you know um, they, they, they they fear like we fear right of, of uh, being infected and, and of suffering and but I see so much kindness around me and you know that that helps me become more kind and more more uh, more uh, compassionate with with others so you see we started looking at if we want a more humane and more compassionate society we cannot achieve that without focusing on individuals right how our choices as individuals inform um, the whole of society so um, that's um, that's that's the reflection for today so we will continue tomorrow with uh, the last um, 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 the last uh, setting for practicing hope learning and practicing hope and that's something to your surprise that is actually judgment something that we um, we, we don't talk often actually we talk very little um, probably because of the fear of misunderstanding uh, but um, that is that is an important part of our faith and we say it in the creed um, and and this is a great time to um, to unpack also um, some of these uh, deep truths that are part of our faith and and which are hard to to do uh, for example in a, in a short homily in the context of a mass so um, before we we go into that uh, which is the last uh, the last part of our um, encyclical uh, there is one more Mary as the star of hope um, before we do that um, let's conclude today with uh, with a prayer that I love and uh, I invite you to search to Google litany of trust um, just search for litany of trust and I'm going to try to pull it out myself here It's a prayer that was composed by the Sisters of Life, a beautiful new uh, religious order. Um, and that's another way through prayer to practice uh, growing in trust and hope. So if you are, um, if you are ready, um, let's pray it together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Litany of Trust. From the belief that I have to earn your love, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that I am unlovable, <clears throat> deliver me, Jesus. From the false security that I have what it takes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute, deliver me, Jesus. From all suspicion of your words and promises, deliver me, Jesus. From the rebellion against childlike dependency on you, deliver me, Jesus. From refusals and reluctances in accepting your will, deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future, deliver me, Jesus. From resentment of excessive preoccupation with the past, deliver me, Jesus. From restless self-seeking in the present moment, deliver me, Jesus. From disbelief in your love and presence, Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that my life has no meaning or worth, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of what love demands, deliver me, Jesus. From discouragement, deliver me, Jesus. That you are continually holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. 
that your love goes deeper than my sins and failings and transforms me. Jesus, I trust in you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean on you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are with me in my suffering. Jesus, I trust in you. That my suffering, united to your own, will bear fruit in this life and the next. Jesus, I trust in you. you that you will not leave me orphan, that you are present in your church. Jesus, I trust in you. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. That you always hear me and in your goodness always respond to me. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me the grace to accept forgiveness and to forgive others. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me all the strength I need for what is asked. Jesus, I trust in you. That my life is a gift. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will teach me to trust you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are my Lord and my God. Jesus, I trust in you. That I am your beloved one. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you have any questions, I'm going to look, um, to look up to see if uh, you have any comments or, or questions. Tiffany, enjoying the series while I work from home? That's awesome. That's wonderful. In all honesty, I hope I don't distract you from work. <laughs> you know, I, I hope... Uh, you know, if you're enjoying lunch right now, that's that's great. Uh, okay, I'm trying to look through your comments. Kindness is a beautiful mirror. True. David, uh, these video chats are very comforting. Well, I hope so. That's what I'm doing them. Want to add to my daily prayers, the litany of trust. Yes, it's a beautiful prayer. Um, Tiffany says this was very timely with the unknown. Absolutely, actually, that's that's one of the reasons why I chose to 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 do this uh, this chat with you to read um, th this encyclical. There is so much wisdom, you know, in the um, in the church, and and I, I I want to share with share this with you. We have a great treasury, and and. It's so important that we, we, we bring all this, we unpack all this treasury and we share it with others. This is how we evangelize, right? The gospel means good news, to bring the good news of how much God loves us and he rescued us and there is hope for us, right? So this this provides, um, I, I probably before the pandemic, I would have not thought of, of going daily alive and, and doing this and, and, you know, but this... Um, this is what love does to you, right? You you want to do everything you can to to be there for the other, to to help the other. And I hope I hope this is helpful to you and you know, if you find this, I invite you to share this with others. You know, you can this is a public uh, public video, public link. You know, if you want to share these series with with someone you know who's struggling right now, this is a great way to 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 do it, right? To live the gospel. And um, I'm going to, with some help, I need to, to upload the, these uh, videos that I've been doing on, I've been putting on Facebook to upload them on YouTube where they're easier to find um, and, and to create um, that playlist there. So, um, so it, it could be um, easier to, to find if you were to, to look for them, if you wanted to share um, with, uh, with someone. Um, I have a question for you and if you don't want to answer now, that's fine. You can answer tomorrow too. I'm thinking at the end, as I'm approaching the end of um, Space Alvi reading of it, um, if you, um, it would be nice to have probably a Zoom meeting at the end and just chat about what what you learned from it and uh, and just share with the others. Um, I um, I think this is better. Um, I mean, I'm reading your comments and um, um, I can't always do that because I have to get close to the phone to watch them. And um, hi, Jay Ward. <laughs> feel connected when I see you. Absolutely, I feel connected with you too. But I think it would be a greater way to do a Zoom meeting at um, at the end of this. So probably early next week. Um, so let me know if if that's something that you would like to do. And um, 
and um, we can we can certainly do that okay so we can actually get to see each other who has been following these series and what you learned um, and um, and conclude in this way I I and I bet you do too I crave with all this social distancing I crave so much for occasions to be with others to meet others to you know and and um, this is this is quite unnatural for us so um, yep Dan says he, he would love yep a zoom meeting would be good absolutely right we're all becoming experts on those things right until about a couple of weeks ago I didn't even know what zoom was and and here we are you know so um, um, among the the long list of things we learned because of the pandemic there is uh, there is this so um, so we're grateful for for this good going on well I wish you a blessed afternoon blessed day and I look forward to uh, continuing reading tomorrow with you God bless you bye bye